Welcome to Synthetic Oil Protection. I'm your host, Steven, and we're here with Chris O. Creations. And this is his personal motorcycle, 2012. And this is the Harley Davidson. And this is which model, Chris? This is an Ultra Classic. Ah. Pretty the... much all the dressers are the same. The street glides, the road glides, the Ultra Classics, everything. We're going to do a three-hole oil change, they refer to it as today. So ah. I'm going to pull the primary cover real quick right now. We are actually going to do primary oil, transmission oil, and motor oil. I love it. Now, I have switched out the factory hardware. I'm a stainless fanatic. And so I've switched out the, the uh, Torx screws to these little Allen buttons. I just like them, and I happen to have them in my bin back there. So Wow. Um, it's just easier for me to use Allens than Torx. I like it. What size Allen thing. did you go to? What is that? This is actually, and I have to put on my eyeballs, I want to say this is a... Five thirty seconds, Allen, and I believe it's a quarter twenty thread pitch. Awesome. So then I polish them just because I'm that guy. All right, I love it. They recommend that you replace this gasket. I don't always find that uh, this big one? necessary. Uh -huh. This this one here. Oh, all right. I think I have that O-ring on um, as an extra precaution, but that's it. So now our primary uh, is off. Right underneath here, you have a five eighths uh, socket that is the drain plug. It'll be located right here. When I get the rest of these uh, going for the motor and transmission, which are located literally right here, then we'll uh, we'll put the, pull those off. You can also, use, so you can use this 5.8 socket or you can use a quarter inch um, Allen screw for this. You can see each one of them fit in there. So there's the, there's the quarter inch Allen. Wow. And here's the 5.8 socket hey and if you're new to the channel definitely subscribe go right on ahead and tap the subscribe button right here then you'll see this little notification bell you'll tap that and then you're gonna hit all notifications so you're gonna tap this and you're gonna see none personalized all you want to tap all and that way you'll get a notification every time I publish a new video. That way you can leave a comment on any of my videos within the first three hours, and I randomly select people for the end of month giveaway. We give $100 gift cards away, all kinds of stuff. So we'll see you at the last Saturday of the month at the giveaway. To prevent vacuum, over here what we've got is, uh, this guy here is the motor oil fill spout, so we wanna pull that so that we don't get um, vacuum, and then this one here, I've already loosened this because I knew we were going to be doing this. All right. So this little drain plug here is for the transmission. Now that this looks like what eight or ten mil. This is actually uh, it's all met uh, standard. This is a three eighths uh, socket head. Oh or, wow, uh, cool! I love it. So those are both the dipsticks. So now that we have those out, I'd like to show you right down here where all the drain plugs are, and they are literally. I don't know if you can see this right here. Yep. Right here. Same thing. This one is a 5 16 Allen. Right. Yep. This one's either that quarter inch or again the uh, 5 8 socket. The 5 8 socket is the uh, motor oil and the 5 16 plug is the transmission fluid. Awesome. Motor oil is flowing. Awesome. There it goes. The other thing we have here is this little guy is a magnet. All right. Picks up any metal shavings that might be in the motor. That's We're going to make sure that that's clean. We also. Before putting this plug back in, I'm gonna double check this O-ring. It might even be a crush washer on this one. I'm not sure yet. I gotta look at it after I clean it up. Hey, Chris, what what is all this metal over here? I see this, there's a spiral metal thing and there's a... Hey, let's get one thing at a time. We're working on the motorcycle all right. now. All right. We'll, all right, we'll talk about that, just not all yet. Right. How's all that? Right. It sounds good. <laughs> That chrome stuff caught my eye. <laughs> so I do metal sculpture for a living, but uh, again, I kind of want to get my motorcycle running because the wife and I are going to be taking a ride this weekend. And Love it. I am looking forward to uh, having my um, my opinion about this uh, AMS oil all over the place. I've been hearing good stuff about it for so long. I just bought this motorcycle in February. I've only put a couple thousand miles on it. Um, I had to do some stuff to it that made it a little bit more uh, realistic. Uh -huh. 2012 and it had 5,800 miles on it when I bought it. And the guy had live to ride, ride to live crap all over it. And I just don't buy it with 5,800 miles on an eight-year-old motorcycle. So I had to fix that. <laughs> so I'm kind of making it a little bit more of a plain Jane situation, which is kind of more my thing. I've done exhaust. I've done some other uh, aesthetic stuff. I just did um, 
did the breather crankcase breather bypass so now it's not breathing back into the cylinder heads which I've never been a big fan of that process that Harley does and um, I also did some fuel adjusters uh, these bikes tend to run a little hot because they're air-cooled and especially here in the desert um, they, there comes the transmission fluid. All right. You can see that coming out now. Again, yep. we've got I both those holes. I just barely see it with that pipe there. Yep. How's that? Can, can yep. you reach it in there? Just barely. There yep. it is. They're both draining. And yep. again, you can take each one of these uh, individually. Obviously, you don't have to do all these at the same time. Um, my thinking is if I'm switching to AMSOIL, I want to go all in uh -huh. and just get the, uh, the maximum benefit from, from day one. Now I'm going to come over there, and we're going to pull that uh, that primary plug. All right. That we already looked at. Yep, right there. <clears throat> and again, all of these should be super, super easy to pull. Um, we've got some issues if they're not, and if they um, if they are hard to pull. And if this is above your head, don't don't ruin your bike over this. Um, take it to somebody that, that knows what they're doing if, if you feel uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form. Because, again, some of these drain holes, if they're not uh, properly sealed, obviously your motorcycle is not going to hold oil. Yep. And that is a big deal. Uh, that's some, definitely some dark stuff coming. That's good. Yeah, so this particular, the primary, it's actually a wear item because that's where the clutches are. So uh -huh. you are physically wearing out what's in there as you're doing this. And I noticed on the uh, on the oil filter that AMSOIL supplies, I'm looking at this right now, and it looks like they give you a brand new O-ring for the drain plug. Now it looks like, it again, it's with the oil filter. It's taped to the lid inside here. You'll see right yeah, there. I love it. So I'm assuming, haven't checked, I haven't pulled the oil filter yet, but I'm assuming that that O-ring, after seeing this O-ring, it's the same size. That's probably what their what their intention is for it. Sweet. So we're gonna let those kind of drain out a little bit, and that usually takes a few minutes. So we might take a quick breather. This is a this is the primary plug for the uh, primary oil, and although this this um, this O ring doesn't look brand new, it does look just fine. It'll be just fine on there. There's a nice flat machine surface that this also docks into on the casting. Um, it looks like somebody had put some anti-seize or something on this plug at one time, <laughs> which I'm going to go ahead and get most of that off because typically that's only used for stainless to stainless or stainless to steel. And in this application, we have steel to aluminum. So it's probably a little less important on this particular thing. And we're, again, there's no pressure in this. So can't emphasize enough, don't over tighten these things. Sweet. But we want to just get all the metal flaking off of the magnet there. And just make sure that that again that that o-ring isn't completely destroyed and cut up this is the transmission plug and as you can see somebody's put something on there um probably some kind of a silicone sealer or something and i am going to wrap this just one time with some teflon tape just because there's no o-ring on there there is a um a tapered threaded hole that this goes in and that's why you can see if you were to take a micrometer and measure this you would see that it does have a slight taper to it so I'm gonna just put one round of Teflon tape around this piece. Um, common in, in plumbing fixtures and, and this type of fitting is common in plumbing. Here is our motor oil plug, which again, I'm gonna make sure that this is cleaned up. And again, the, uh, the oil filter looks like it comes with a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on this one. And um, unless there's something in the oil filter itself, you can just see that it's got just a little bit of wear on it, Not, nothing bad. It, I'm sure it would be fine, but I'm going to replace it just to have that extra bit of insurance. With a little bit of plumber's tape, make sure you wrap it, and when you tighten it up, it doesn't unravel it. You want it to, the tail to go this way, so when you tighten it this way, you're not unraveling, but tightening it. So right now, I'm going to move the pan out of the way and put two of these plugs back in. The trans, I'm going to put this up underneath the, uh, the oil filter, because that's next. One thing I like to do also is to just make sure that the surfaces, the machine surfaces that these uh, plugs actually go into are nice and uh, nice and clean. Obviously the trans does not have one because again that's a tapered hole, but the motor uh, plug, which is this guy here, 
will have that uh, that machine surface on there. I'm going to pull the filter off now, and fortunately, the filter that's on here has an end cap that uh, accepts an 11 16 uh, socket. On the new filter, you're better off getting the type of wrench that goes on here and also has the receiver for the uh, 3H drive ratchet because getting this type of wrench on here down in there, even if you had the right size, in that little bit of space, I hear can really be a booger. <laughs> so awesome. Invest whatever it costs for that little wrench, and I'm gonna take advantage of the guy that put this one on here. And when we go back on, it's just gonna be uh, hand tight anyway, so not a big deal. Now the other thing you really want to do, not with this oil, because this is that mucky stuff that's been in there, but we're going to take some AMS oil ah, and lube the liquid gold. We're going there to lube it is. The uh, the gasket. Yes. We're going to lube that gasket with AMS oil after we let that drain a little bit, and I'm going to clean off all those surfaces and everything, cool. and just get a lot of that. As you can see, it's kind of just getting everywhere, and it's just kind of what it does. So <laughs> something you got to deal with on these guys, no big deal. If it ain't messy, it ain't fun, and if it ain't fun, it ain't messy. That's why the wetter, the better. Chris is getting in there. <laughs> Here's our AMS oil that I'm gonna dip into, and again, just get some, we just want that, that seal to be wet. Oh yeah. Nice and wet. Always. And I'm gonna make sure that I got that surface in here wiped down real good. Yep. Get all that old booger stuff off of there. And then again, when you put this oil filter on, there's no need to uh, wrench it on. You're literally just gonna hand tight it. Make sure that there's no oil on the outside so that you can get a good hand tight on it. Beautiful. But that's about it right there. Beautiful. Absolutely. Make sure you don't cross thread this thing because that would be a, a bummer. <laughs> I'm gonna get a uh, probably a different rag just to make sure that there's no oil on that and no oil on my hands and get a nice good hand tight on it and you're good to go. I love it. And how this filter is different, it filters at 99% efficiency at 20 microns. So quite a bit of an upgrade over OEM. It's also a little bit higher flow medium and uh, it actually holds more contaminants. And you say, well, how much more? Uh, that medium holds four times more contaminants than cellulose paper filters. And coming on over to what you can do with this sucker, you're good for uh, 10,000 miles or one year, whichever comes first, on one oil change. So when you put this oil in, you're basically good for about double OEM interval, uh, and you're gonna have uh, much, much less wear on the motor. And uh, he's looking forward to some shifting, so we're gonna get his feedback in a minute. All right, it's that time to put in the liquid gold. Now we gotta be quiet, soft about this, because we got a teeny weeny funnel we're using. And we tried to get in there with the big one and do a tall pour, but this is the best we got. Look at this little guy. Look how cute. Look at that. Barely couldn't even fit a finger in. The good but, thing is, is that M&Ms won't fall in through this funnel. So I like that's that. That's a good thing. This is kind of slow going. Look at the liquid gold go. So beautiful. So pure. So clean. So much protection. And I'm sure you're wondering how much protection. Well, this oil resists viscosity breakdown six times better than the uh, OEM stuff. So check that out. You'll see that down in the description section below. But this is the part that gives me heart palpitations when I'm putting in the liquid gold. It's just such a pure process, almost like giving birth to a newborn. Look at that gentle hand that Chris has. Look at that concentration. I just don't want to clean up a mess. <laughs> and I don't want to spill any of this oil because it really needs to all be in the motor, not on the floor in a rag at the end of the day. So I wanted to mention the uh, Harley torture test. If you want to check that out on YouTube, type it in. You'll see that on Amsoil. They actually took one of these bikes with no wind and they run the motor on a dyno with absolutely no air flowing over the fins to cool it. Because it's uh, air cooled and... Uh, they actually got up the heads up to I think 550, 600 degrees, and it got so hot, the actual oil filter stud wouldn't come off when they went to take off the oil filter. And you'll see the video clip, unbelievable. But the viscosity breakdown on the oil was next to nothing, almost unchanged. 
And uh, this is what keeps the metal parts separated. This is what keeps everything cool. This is what allows your bike to shift better, run smoother, uh, make more power, especially in high heat. It's gonna keep those uh, temperatures way lower. And uh, just unbelievable the difference. And uh, we had a good guy, uh, our good man, Matt, on the channel. We did his Harley. You can check out that video up here. I think he had a soft tail. And Matt's still loving his bike. He uh, drives it all over town. And now we're gonna be getting his feedback in a minute, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, feel up the other couple areas. I wanted to say something go real ahead. quick. Yeah. Um, and you, it's really hard to get this oil to drip because mm -hmm. it's, it's so sticky. Um, but what I noticed when I got to the end of the last bottle, the drips that did find their way out of the bottle wouldn't become part of the oil in the filter in the funnel and it like it like almost skipped like a rock across water into into the uh, into the motor reservoir here and again it, you can't do it this way I'm trying to get it to drip and it won't but I want to show you this when I get to the end of this bottle unfortunately this little funnel makes it a little long time but so Chris was mentioning this tenaciousness this uh, additive package that's actually in the liquid gold and what that is is a uh, specialty uh, additive that actually allows it to cling to the metal so when you do your next cold start the next day which a cold start really doesn't have anything to do with the temperature it's more sitting overnight all the oil drains down and it comes off those parts and uh, this oil just clings to the metal differently and that's what makes it such a big deal when you cold start which on some vehicles up to 80 percent of the wear is at the cold start so that's what's making that big 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 difference this is what I was talking about. Look how that drip shined down into the funnel. Some of them catch, but some of them, see that drip? It just, it's not, it's, it's, so when it flows like that, it's catching onto the funnel, but when it drips, look at that. Look at that drip. It's just not even, it's look at so that. It's so slippery, it skips. That's what I'm, that's an interesting aspect to me. I don't know about the formula of this, but I've never seen oil do that before, and I'm thinking it's good. So on my diesel truck, which we're going to be doing um, in the very near future, I've always run Mobile One. And even you're telling me that is not 100% synthetic motor oil? Oh my gosh, Chris. It's like a mirage in the deserts. People go for this, this fake thing that they uh, think that they thought that they thought that they thunk. And it ends up being, uh, unfortunately, a synthetic blend. So when you get Mobile One, uh, a full synthetic can actually be called full synthetic when it's 25% synthetic or more. So they can actually have more one that's only 25% synthetic. <laughs> so 75% can just be oil that's refined out of the ground. So this is where it's really, um, my thinking on, on oil that's refined out of the ground is kind of like uh, art stuff, because that's what I do. If I were to take stuff out of a junkyard to make a sculpture, it's gonna look like I took shit out of a junkyard and made a sculpture. Excuse me, stuff out of a junkyard and made a sculpture. <laughs> but if I can go to a supply house and get raw materials, I have nothing dictating what I do. So I can do whatever I want. And my opinion is that if you're taking something that already exists and you're refining it and putting it through processes as opposed to starting from scratch with something that is completely man-made, you can do whatever you want to this product and therefore get the results that you're really after as opposed to settling for whatever is in the product that you have found in the ground. Does that make sense? I yeah. hope it does, because it does to me. It does to me too. It's a built molecule. That tops off our motor. That is the fill spout for the motor oil. And this one right here is the trans. And I did that with um, without any camera attention just because we had a minute and I just went ahead and did it because it just happens kind of slow and that one's even further back because of my exhaust. And it's just one quart, right? One quart fills that trans completely. All right, and this is specifically designed for the transmission. And a lot of people, they ask, well, even which one's better, which one's better? And it's just preference. You can run the uh, 20W50 or you can run the primary. The difference is the primary is specifically built for that application. So. That's the, or, the, or should I say the transmission? Transmission. So yeah, so they, they, build that, uh, they build that liquid to be the best it can possibly be for that specific application. 
And I can't wait to see what it does because a lot of people have told me that the shifting, finding neutral on a Harley sometimes can be a little, um, a little challenging if you don't get it before you stop. And uh, everybody that I've talked to has said that AMS oil makes that neutral almost like jumping onto the, onto the shifting peg. So that's what I'm really looking for is uh, seeing how easy it is to get that neutral after you come to a stop at a, at a uh, red light. Great, time to put in the primary. Here we are on the primary. Uh, V-twin primary fluid is what AMS oil calls it, which is exactly what it is. You can see down here in the lower part behind the derby, there's a little notch there. Just enough space to get my little funnel in there. So <laughs> now I see why I have this little tiny thing. We're going to put about one and a third in here is what, uh, what the book calls for. So we're just going to follow what the book says. So this is the one with a little bit of patience. And then we'll do a third out of that other bottle. Put cool. this derby back on. I can't wait to take this thing for a ride. I'm excited. 1.3 quarts going in. Beautiful. Liquid gold. Look at the way that it's just, I just think that's beautiful. Look at that. Chris this is, is cool. having so much fun with his new motorcycle. I mean, this is- Just the oil. To me, this is like watching, this is better than watching a, a kangaroo be born at the zoo. I'd rather see this than see a, a kangaroo be given birth. <laughs> this is better than watching the Mona Lisa. Get, one down. Yep. We got one more to go here. This right here is better than watching the Mona Lisa get painted in person. <laughs> Look at that excitement in his face. He's so excited. Okay, so um, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'll figure it out here in a second. It's like 20, 28 ounces. So we're gonna do this down to about 20 left in the, in the can, which will give us about a third. All right, it's that time to put in the quick shot. This is the fuel additive that cleans the injectors, the valves. This cleans all the carbon deposits inside the combustion chamber. The power of cleaning protection is passed on to Chris. He's gonna be putting it in, show how easy it is. You taco the lid, just a little teeny weeny seal. If you have little fingers, Whoop. it's easy. Easy as pie. <laughs> when you got these kinds of fingers. Yep. Here we go. You're gonna shove, go ahead. Do it, uh, stick it all the way in. Trust your intuitions. I like seeing it go in. All right, all right. You like to watch, that's a good thing. I like to watch. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. And a little sick. Look at that. All right, well that's gonna really clean up. This is good for six gallons for a cleanup dose, up to 12 gallons as a maintainer. This has a uh, stabilizer in it, so if you let your bike sit over season, you're gonna be protected with that stabilizer. Definitely a good idea. And then also, that cleans ethanol buildup and stuff like that. A lot of these gas stations now are like 15, God, I think some are even more than that, 15, 30% ethanol. So you gotta watch that stuff. So make sure you're using a fuel additive. Definitely gonna pay you back big time in the long run. All right, our first startup with AMS oil. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm not neutral, sorry. Gotta find neutral. Let's see if you can find it. of friction. I'm no engineer, 
but I do know about friction and metal because that's kind of what I do. Uh, I couldn't be happier. I'm just going to say one of the other things I wanted to mention is how much better the, the clutch feels All right. with this product. All right, so I wanted to ask Chris, so exactly how is it different and how does it feel different? So again, with the motor oil, I'm, I'm noticing the engine RPMs are climbing much faster than they used to. I already mentioned the coming into neutral way easier than it ever has in any motorcycle that I've ever had, and I've had a ton. I used to build them for a living. But one of the other things I forgot to mention is the primary, the clutches, feel like they grab much better now with this lube in there. there I used to get a little bit of slip now and then, not all the time, but now and then, and it, I, with a real quick run down to get gas, I didn't notice it at all. And I actually used to stay off of the throttle a little bit to avoid that slipping of the clutches, huh. which I just don't feel like I'm getting now with this product in the, in the primary. Beautiful. This primary fluid is what I, I'm never going to do another motorcycle without this in it. And I wanted to mention, if you wanted to grab some liquid lube, I have all my links down in the description section below. If you're on a laptop or a desktop, click show more. If you're on a smartphone, click that reverse down arrow. All the stuff's there, and uh, this is what I do full time, about 66 hours a week. I'm doing uh, YouTube, so definitely happy to help you with any of your projects. And uh, Chris, you're the man for doing it. I'd like to add one other thing. Uh -huh. For a mere $10 fee, you can become a preferred customer. Again, highly recommend it. Saved me $15, and it'll save me, if I were to do the same exact thing again, next time it's gonna save me 25 bucks. Oh, so yeah. become a preferred customer, put it in all your vehicles, you will not regret it. Beautiful. Thanks, Chris. You're the best. If you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe. Go right on ahead and tap the subscribe button right here. And then you're gonna see this little notification bell. You'll tap that and then you're gonna hit all notifications. So you're gonna tap this and you're gonna see none personalized all. You wanna tap all and that way you'll get a notification every time I publish a new video. That way you can leave a comment on any of my videos within the first three hours and I randomly select people for the end of month giveaway. We give $100 gift cards away, all kinds of stuff. So we'll see you at the last Saturday of the month at the giveaway. See, this is why I do this stuff. I love getting uh, the reaction and seeing people their first experience with the liquid gold. And uh, so Chris, how happy are you? I couldn't be more happy with this. I mean, for what it costs and what I feel the difference already, you know, this is a big bike. It's a 900 pound bike. I'm an old man, I'm 50 years old now, and I am not out to hot rod and stuff. My buddy and I that I ride with a lot, we were just more concerned about getting by the RVs than really hot rodding. And I really feel like that liquid gold made this motorcycle a hot rod. It is that much more responsive, so noticeable. I highly recommend it. You'll notice it too. I love it. All right. You're the best, Chris. We'll be back for more lube in action in the future. So definitely subscribe. If you're new to the channel, click the little subscribe icon here. And hey, check out the other motorcycle videos we got. Honda Valkyrie Garoon. We also nailed the soft tail. Those videos are here. And we'll see you back next time. One Mom. more quick thing. Oh, go ahead. Chris O Creations, if you're ever looking for metal sculpture. Yes. And we can even show a clip of that. We'll put a link on the bottom for my, for yes. my uh, website and my YouTube channel as well. Definitely. Thanks Chris, for tuning in. Chris has some very unique things. We'll see you back next time on Synthetic Oil Protection. Cheers to protection, protection, protection.